Welcome to Learning Mole. So we're now on lesson four of our Subtraction for Kids series and we really want to talk in this lesson about story problems. Story problems are that sort of correlation between written problems and real life context. So actually bringing that, um, yes, you know what subtraction is. Yes, you can use a basic number line, but can you actually use your vocabulary, your tools to actually solve a problem. So it's actually putting those skills into practice, which is really, really important um, that children can actually understand how to use the skills that they have developed in context. Now, we're going to start very, very simple. So we would be talking at this stage um, again, very, very basic sort of um, P1 reception sort of age. And then we'll move through right through to year two sort of P3 level. So story problems, I would start um, with my child um, very, very practically. So you want to actually give them something physical that they can hold in their hand, that they can move about, that they can play with, that they can understand, and they've got that visual because it's really, really important. I would actually start orally as well. I wouldn't worry about writing anything down. So you make up your little story. So I've got four, these are sweets. I've got four sweets and this big bad monster wants to eat them and he's going to sneak over and he's going to steal them. He steals it away. How many do I have left? And have fun with it. This is the important thing about stories at this stage is actually having fun. So let your child be the big bad monster stealing the sweets and actually make stories that are relevant to them. So again, just another one just to, to show you. I would again really not worry about writing anything down. It's very, very tempting to get your child to write all this down at this stage. They don't need to. This is about understanding the concept. It's not being able to write numbers and write calculations. So now you've got five little monsters. They're all having a party. They're all dancing, put some music on. One eats too many sweets and he gets sick and he has to go home. Off he goes, how many do I have left? So just have a bit of fun with it with your child. Use what you've got at home, as I've said. I mean, we have these, we love Lego, so build towers, knock them down. Play-Doh is also a really good one for squishing things and taking them away and breaking bits off. And then you can stick it back together again, which is great. So really stick with that practical to begin with. As your child then progresses, you do want to get them to start um, recording their calculations because that is an important aspect of maths as well, that they can record their thinking. Um, I would say as well, continue to really talk about your child with maths and get them to talk about what they're thinking, their thought process, what they're thinking as they're going along because again, that will make a huge amount of difference when they actually have to do mental maths calculations later on because that they know their thought pro process they can actually apply that to mental situations as well. So I've got two little word problems on here. They would be examples of what we would be expecting or your child would be expected to answer um, in around year one, sort of P2 level, and then year two, sort of P3 level. So I will explain the difference to you. So I've got this, um, the first one here, which is um, sort of, we were talking about year one level, um, P2. So there are eight children at PE, two fall over, have to go to the nurse or whatever, um, how many are left. This would be the key thing here, is actually getting your child to identify the information that's relevant in this problem. Again, starting this at an early age makes a world of difference to your child that when they get to year five or P6 or whatever, that they can identify what the information is that they need, the relevant information. Because as the problems get more meatier, there is more information in there and there's also sometimes information that they don't actually need. So I would actually get encourage your child to actually get a pen and say, right, so what numbers do you need in this problem? And actually get them to highlight the numbers. So I would actually get them to circle them, colour them in, do whatever you think. And again, this is where you can talk about, well, so what number needs to go first if we're doing a calculation? What will our calculation be? Oh, yes, we know that the biggest number always has to go first in subtraction, and you can't do subtraction in any order. So, yes, so it's going to be um, 8 take away 2. Okay, how do you know it's taking away? This is where you want to enforce that idea of left. Left is a vocabulary related to taking away. Sometimes, mostly when people say how many are left, there's going to be some sort of subtraction going on there. So I would actually get them to highlight that as well. Again, it doesn't matter that it's children, it doesn't matter where they are. It's all about that vocabulary and those numbers. 
from that then you can talk about well how would you solve this so they get them to write their calculation so of course their calculation is 8 subtract 2, 8 take away 2, 8 minus 2 whatever you want to whatever language you want to do and then get them to solve again if they want to use a number line fine if they still are needing those concrete um, actual physical items fine do with what your child is comfortable it doesn't matter if they're still using a number line. It doesn't matter if they're still using concrete items. We will, you will be able to move them away from that. But let your child work within their comfort zone to start off with and build up to removing those items for them and then let them go through and solve it. Now, the second one's a wee bit more complex and it's what we would call a, a multi-step um, word problem or story problem. Multi-step because there are two calculations that need to take place. And again, you can see the jump from sort of this one to this one as your child becomes more advanced. So Mark has 25 sweets. He gives Kim 11 and Joe nine, eats nine. How many are left? So again, encouraging your child, right? First of all, you need to highlight your numbers and highlight the vocabulary that's telling you what to do. So of course you're highlighting the 25, the 11, the nine, and the word left. Obviously I'm rushing through this, you can take a lot more time with your child. Um, we know that the biggest number always has to go first, so we know that initially or immediately we need that 25 and I'm actually just going to do it on my sideboard, I'll pop that up there because I haven't got much room on there. So let's set that up. So I'm going to put my 25 and I need to ascertain is Kim taking away sweets and is Joe taking away sweets? Well, he gives them away to Joe. So again, that word give is important. So yes, we know that actually he's giving some away to Kim. So first of all, we need to know how many he's got left after he gives some to Kim. So we're going to do 25, take away 11. Again, I'm not going to talk about different methods that you might use at this stage because this is all just about story problems. So we will talk about different strategies for solving something like this in further videos, but I'm not going to focus on strategies in this. It's just about the story problem. So you'll get your child to solve this part. And of course, they will get the answer 14. He's got 14 left. Now what happens? Oh, this is the second step. Joe now comes along. He eats nine. So we're going to do 14 take away nine. Okay, and we're going to write that calculation down. I would encourage them to write their calculation down because then they have got something to double check and they've got a visual there to know that they've actually followed all the steps within the word problem. So 14, take away 9. This is now going to test my maths at this time in the morning, which is 5. So he has 5 sweets left. Again, make the problems relevant to your child. They can also be done orally if you're driving along in the car, you know, oh, how many red cars did you see? Oh, how many red cars did you, blue cars? How many more red cars were there than blue? All of that, actually just de developing all that um, and really working through it. But do please focus on your child's level and focus on your child's interests. They will be more willing to solve a story problem if it's something involving, in my in my case, Minecraft. If it's something to do with Minecraft, they won't, in my house, care that they're actually having to do maths as long as they're getting to talk about Minecraft, to be honest. So really work with your child in interests and focus on what they like and what they enjoy.